What's up guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Know Your Bass Player. Today we're talking the high flying, high jumping, psycho slap player that's all smash and no flash, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. My name is Alfie Williams and it's my job to dissect the gear, the style and the techniques of the great bass players out there. Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers has been an inspiration for me since I was a teenager. Some of the first songs that I learned as a bass player were Chili Pepper songs and were a great way to bridge the gap between my musical tastes and other people's. For over 30 years, Flea has been associated with a thundering slapping style and finger fast plucking. Today we dig deep to find out just what gear he uses to make him sound so good. When Flea helped create the Red Hot Chili Peppers in 1983, he joined the scene using the Music Man Cutlass One. Flea recorded with a Cutlass One on the first two albums, Red Hot Chili Peppers and Freaky Styley. This early Cutlass of Flea's was adorned with pink and green tape, and then splashed with paint. This bass can be seen in the band's earliest videos, Two Men Don't Kill Coyotes, Jungle Man, and Catholic School Girls Rule. As well as the band's first live television performance on 1984's Thick of the Night. In a short space of time, this space quickly became adorned with shiny flag stickers, notably from other countries. The headstock was painted yellow and black. Music Man had partnered with Modulus Graphite to produce two short-lived basses, the Cutlass 1 and the Cutlass 2. These basses look like normal Music Man stingrays, but they actually have graphite necks installed. Modulus have a hand in Flea's future basses, but we'll talk about them and the future of graphite necks later on. Around 600 of these basses were made, they never quite caught on as much as the Stingray, and production ceased in the mid 80s. Interestingly enough, as of October 2016, Music Man had produced two new basses inspired by a modern rework to the Cutlass guitar. This is based on designs that were left incomplete by Leo Fender. Leo Fender at the time was owner of Music Man prior to Ernie Ball in 1984. As this guitar was a success, Music Man decided to bestow complementing bass versions upon us too. These modern basses reworked the successful elements of the Fender Precision and the Fender Jazz, and then blends them seamlessly with a Music Man Stingray. The resulting basses are the Precision Style Cutlass and the Jazz Style Caprice. Moving on to the third album, the Uplift Mofo Party Plan, Flea started to use Spectre basses. His first Spectre bass was an NS2JA Bolton and seen on the video Fight Like a Brave. In 1989, Mother's Milk was released and Flea had switched to now classic NS2 model, which features a three-piece neck-through construction. This and the EMG PJ pickups give it a warm, well-rounded, immense resonance. Flea can be seen happily slapping away on the video Knock Me Down. The other two singles from Mother's Milk were Taste the Pain and Higher Ground. Flea used the Tiesco MV4, which was sold under the trade name Silvertone in the US. A strange choice for Flea, considering the bass's shorter neck and a lower starting point, most low deal for beginners. The 1991 album Blood Sugar Sex Magic was recorded with a combination of basses. But it's thanks to touring at this time that Flea is remembered for the honking and thumping tone of the Music Man Stingray. Stingrays are known for having extremely low action and a trademark active humbucker. Built with Alnico magnets, it's a combination of three metals, aluminium, cobalt and nickel. Add to this combination a three band EQ and you have one loud, versatile instrument. The Stingray can be seen on videos like Give It Away, as well as the live video If You Have To Ask. A Stingray was also used for the tracks Funky Monks and The Righteous and The Wicked, where Flea said he needed ultra low action. You'll also notice a five string Stingray on the video for Under the Bridge. Contrary to the video, this was actually recorded with a Wall Mark II bass. Wall Mark II basses have an unbelievable tone that is warm and loud beyond belief. This is down to their proprietary humbucker pickup. Each pole piece has its own ceramic magnet wrapped around a coil. The use of the Wall bass coincided with a new musical change for Flea. Trying new things, he was turning down his hyper slap aggressive passages and focusing more on songwriting as a whole. This bass can be glimpsed in the video Suck My Kiss and seen frequently in the 1991 documentary Funky Monks. For the production of 1995's One Hot Minute, Flea stated in Bass Player magazine that he was using an Alembic Epic for most of the record. The reason being is that the Alembic has a more consistent volume throughout the neck. The highs sound just as loud as the lows. This is known to be an issue on the Stingray. The article also states that Flea's bass is a stuck epic. The Alembic's volume and punchy tone was a great compliment to new guitarist Dave Navarro's tone. Dave was known for layering and dubbing effects, which could be quite thick in the mix. Strangely enough, an off-handed quote from Flea said, I'd never be caught dead playing it live. I always use the Stingray. But the Alembic is like the wall I used on the last record. I didn't like it either, but it's easier to record with. The Alembic is seen in a video for My Friends, which depicts clips of the band recording in the studio. The rest of the videos, Aeroplane, Coffee Shop and Warped 
they depict the use of the classic Stingray. Going six times platinum in 1997 was Californication. It was at this time the Modulus Flea bass hit the market. Developed by Modulus with Flea, it was their combined take on a Music Man Stingray. The specialty of this bass is a graphite neck. Normal basses made of wood are a malleable material that can ebb and flow with the environment. Not only this, but the pull of the strings across the neck don't help either. You can counter this issue with a truss rod, but it's not a permanent solution. Necks are prone to certain unpredictable and undesirable qualities, like bowing, either too pronounced or too subtle, dead spots or areas on the neck where notes are quieter or more indistinct compared to the others. Non-traditional neck materials like graphite are attempts to correct these issues by replacing wood with lighter, stiffer, more uniform components that don't change. For Flea, these bases were useful for touring, all around the world, as they would hardly ever need to be adjusted to the environment. The strength of the neck also made it useful for thrashing about on stage. The Blue Sparkle Modulus Flea bass was the first to be made, and primarily used on the Californication tour. Flea has had many modulus basses over the years, several of which still show up in his rig today. For the most part, these basses are all set up exactly the same, with graphite necks, lame poor pickups, and Aguilera preamps. All of these basses have made an appearance since the Californication era, right up to the current Getaway era. Here's a few of his collection. If you'd like to know all of the stats of these basses, take a look at our show notes, which we've linked down below. There's the Sunburst, the Aboriginal pattern, Silver Sparkle and a 5-string Silver Sparkle, All Black Custom Lakers Flea Font on the fretboard, and a Circle Jerk Punk Rock. The second bass to be featured on Californication was a 1961 jazz bass. This was first seen on the video for Californication. This is a remarkable bass, and from here on out used to record nearly every studio album the Chili Peppers have had. We're talking By The Way, Stadium Arcadium, I'm With You and The Getaway. This bass was given to him by a fan after asking in his online tour journal if anyone knew where he could get a pre-CBS jazz bass. Being one of the original shell pink jazz basses ever produced by Fender, it's estimated to be worth $35,000. While Flea adores this bass and treasures his old wood sound, his bass technician Tracy Robar has stated that it's a great bass but it wasn't for the Chili Peppers. It can't play as quick and there's no cutting tone. Fender have since brought out a signature Flea Jazz bass, which tried to match the features of his 61 Jazz. It includes vintage J pickups and a period correct neck. The neck profile is ideal for those that like putting their thumb on the back of the neck or on the side. The By The Way tour in 2003 solidified the Chili's popularity in mainstream music. It was at this time the Circle Jerk punk rock bass was seen in music videos and on tour making it most likely the second popular bass that Flea is known for. It was painted red, white and blue, akin to the French flag, and then adorned with even more stickers. These feature a bunch of Flea's favourite punk bands, and as you've guessed it, the Circle Jerks are being one of them. In 2007, the Chili Peppers entered a hiatus that lasted for two years. During that time, Flea left the sponsorship with Modulus to create his very own line of basses. Because once you've been sponsored, the only way to top it off is to create your very own line of basses, right? His goal was to start a music company to produce quality bass guitars that were affordable for young people. The Flea Bass, not to be confused with the Modulus Flea Bass, which by the way has now been renamed the Modulus Funk, thanks to Flea's abandonment, has two models, the Touring model with a 34 inch neck and a Junior model with a 30 inch neck. They are very colourful basses and they come in four different colour combinations. For the recording of I'm With You, which began in September 2010, Flea's own Flea bass was further customised with Lane Poor pickups and an Aguilera preamp. In all of the videos for this album, Flea can be seen playing his Flea bass, which has a multicoloured spin art finish, created by UK controversial artist Damien Hurst. The two collaborated on these basses and set up an auction to help fund Flea's music school, the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music. One of these basses was set you back $50,000. The Getaway released in 2016 and gave us a few singles. Solely on the videos for Dark Necessity can we see Flea still playing his Fender 61 Jazz. And in Sick Love, he plays a rendition of his Flea bass. Finishing with our current year, 2017, Fender have again provided Flea with several custom basses. His now number one bass is a jazz style body with a Lane Paul Legacy pickup, Aguilera preamp and a graphite reinforced neck. He has a few more basses like this of the same design, one of which is his Laker bass, and a heavily relict road worn pinkish version, which is a nod to a 61 Jazz. That's it for Flea's bases. Take a look at the show notes where we've included a lot more history and specifications that we couldn't include in the video. We continue talking Flea's rig with amplifiers, strings, and techniques in part two, so please join us for that by clicking on the link below. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe, and I will see you in part two.